Welcome everybody, welcome to my channel, Coro Girl. Coro stands for Colorado Rockies Girl. I live in Loveland, Colorado, and my town uh, sits right at the base of the foothills of the Colorado Rocky Mountains. So today we're going to be making mead. Uh, mead is one of the oldest alcoholic beverages in history, and it's honey wine. Okay, so mead is just water, honey, and yeast, and that's it. And that's a traditional mead. Now, you can make other meads, um, like a melomel, where you add fruit to it. You could make a sizer, where you add apples to it. Uh, a piment, where you add grapes to it. So there's all different kinds of mead. Um, I encourage you to go on and research it because it's kind of fascinating. You can also make still mead or you can make carbonated mead. I actually prefer carbonated mead. Um, I do like both, but I do prefer um, to have that carbonation. Um, to me, it just makes it much lighter and um, I don't know, I just like the flavor of it a little bit, a little bit better. So we're just gonna make a traditional mead today um, I do want to mention that I have, I also have created um, a playlist for home brewing, so brewing beer. Um, and the reason I mention that is I labeled um, all the different videos so that if you want to go back, for instance, um, of how do you, how important is sanitation and what kind of sanitizer do you use, how do you sanitize it, what do you sanitize when you're um, brewing or making mead. Um, so I'm not going to go over that all again, but you can go back and find that easily because I've labeled them very, very well for that. What I do want to show you is I bought a kit from the same company called Craft -a Brew. I don't work for Craft -a Brew. I just love homebrewing. I've been homebrewing since 2013, by the way. Um, I used to do big five gallon batches, but then I had to move to an apartment. And so now I'm doing these little cute little one gallon um, batches, all right, and these one gallons, you guys, by the way, will make 10 12 ounce bottles. Okay, so I'm choosing to use these flip top bottles. Okay, um, you actually you really want to get dark brown bottles. I forgot and got clear because it's been a while since I've actually bottled because I used to um, keg my beer and my mead. Um, but I'm only making 10 of these. It's only made 10, and I'll just pack them in the boxes in a dark closet somewhere, and they'll be fine because you don't want the light hitting it. Um, so, water, yeast, and honey, okay, that's all that we need to do this. It's a very simple process. So let's go back to the kits. This is from Craft -a Brew. This is $45, at least at the time here, March 2022, that I bought these, okay? Um, and let me tell you everything that comes with it, okay? Basically, for this, everything does. So you have this uh, one-gallon glass carboy fermenter. Okay, they give you a funnel, um, a, a bung or a, a rubber stopper, okay. Um, let's see, I want to make sure I, I get everything here. Um, and then it comes with tubing that you need for siphoning, okay. And then we also, with that, is an airlock. And you can go back to my home brewing segment. Um, and it tells you more about airlocks and what they are. And we'll, we'll talk about some of that as we go along, but not as much as my homebrewing ones. It does come with um, an airlock, okay? And then it came with yeast. So this is, Lavlin is the brand, it's a wine yeast. And then two packets of yeast nutrient, which we'll talk about as we go along. And then it has like a clamp and some other little parts that go along with that racking cane. Um, it actually came with a packet of sanitizer as well, so you don't even have to buy sanitizer. I do, I buy uh, a bigger bottle of what's called Star Sand um, to sanitize all my equipment with, and I'm, I'm kind of putting these away for a rainy day in case I ever run out of my big bottle of it, and then um, I'm ready to brew and I need some, then I'll have a backup. But you don't have to buy sanitizer. Alright, so that's everything that it came with. Um, what you need to have ready is honey. Okay, so you need honey. Um, this is locally sourced here in Colorado. This is alfalfa, clover, and wildflower honey. Okay, so it's going to have uh, floral notes to that since it's a wildflower honey. This is raw and unfiltered. Okay, so it's just like cooking. The better the ingredients that you put into your dishes that you cook, the better the flavor of your food. The better the honey, the better the mead that's going to come out. And research it. There are tons and tons of honeys. Um, 
My favorite is called Metafoam Honey, which actually has a marshmallow taste to it. It's super expensive though, and I was gonna have to order it. So I wanted to get my first batch going, so I bought some local honey, but it needs to be raw honey, okay? So I think this is gonna be fabulous as well. So you need honey, you're gonna need bottles, like I said, and I got the bottles from uh, Craft a Brew as well that I bought this kit. So everything I ordered online, they delivered to my, my home, you guys. You're gonna need your bottles, 10 of those at least. And then you need some kind of a bucket because you need it for sanitation, um, to make a sanitizer so that you can, you can dunk all of your equipment into that. Um, let's see, I think that is it. So let's go ahead and make some mead. I almost uh, forgot to talk about water. <clears throat> water is super important when you're home brewing beer, but especially um, with mead. So here in Lovell, Colorado, we have really good drinking water. I could use the drinking water, but I still, especially since I'm only gonna make one gallon, I have a two gallon Brita filter, water filter in my refrigerator. Um, and so I'm just gonna filter some water and use that for my mead. Um, but if you, live somewhere where the water is like hard water you guys discolored or you kind of you know it's, it's not the best drinking water that um that you can think of you definitely want to either use filtered water or you could use spring water you know, go to the grocery store and buy jugs of spring water or filtered water don't use sterilized water though sterilized water doesn't have any minerals in it and you actually need those minerals for the fermentation process so again no to sterilized yes to um, filtered water, yes to spring water, and yes to tap water if you feel like your tap water is, is really, really of good quality. The kit comes with sanitizer like I was saying in a little, a little packet, but I want to hang on to that. Um, and you can certainly use that, but I usually buy like a big bottle of what's called star sand. It's very common for home brewing and mead making. Um, and so, uh, a half an ounce per um, one and a half, I'm sorry, two and a half gallons for making your sanitation solution. So I had just done my bucket here. I don't know if you guys can see that. And I marked two and a half gallons on there and you can see that through there. So I already, I went ahead and put that in there, um, kind of swirled it around a little bit with some kind of a, a spatula, whatever you have, you know, it's got some holes in it. It's kind of nice. So anyways, um, we need to sanitize our equipment. So our um, siphon, um, only because I'm going to siphon this into my carboy because we're going to have to sanitize that as well. Now it came with a, like a little racking cane, like basic siphon, um, which you can use, but I actually bought this pump because I used to have it when I did, um, you know, five gallon batches. Um, so I rebought that after doing my home brewing series, the other one worked fine, but it was just a lot messier, not as easy to do. So I'm going to go ahead and just pump that. I've got all the tubing in there, but that way I get sanitizer that's pumping around in that tubing. We're going to put in our rubber stopper, our bung in there. That'll, that'll sink to the bottom. Um, and then our airlock, so we've got the lid, so make sure you dunk that down in there. And then it has a little cap inside, and then this. So we want to get that all sanitizing. Our funnel, in case we need that. Um, I'm actually not sure that we're going to need that, but let's go ahead and do the funnel. and. It only has to sanitize for one minute and then you can just let it kind of air dry. You don't want to take like a towel and dry things off because no, who knows how clean your towel is, right? Um, but it's non-toxic, you guys, so uh, it can't, it's not going to hurt you. Not that you would want to sit there and drink, drink it out of the bottle, um, but you don't rinse it or anything. So a good idea to put a towel down first and I'm just siphoning some of the sanitizer um, into this fermenter here and if you put it in the bottom you don't get as much foam there we go putting that over my finger over the top of that okay and uh, so we're going to let this sanitize I'll put the bung on there and shake it a little bit so that it gets up into this area I usually sanitize my hands as well you guys um, and again I have that pumping siphon it comes with a basic siphon all the pump does is you can put it down in there and fill the tube but if you just have any tube just fill it like with tap water, hold your thumb over the end, and then, you know, put it down in here, put the other one in the sanitizer solution, and, and then let go, and it'll work just as well. 
let's go ahead and siphon that sanitizer back into the bucket. You could just pour it, but then it causes a lot of foam. You don't have to really fear the foam, uh, but you still kind of want some of that foam to go away. So um, I also like this kind of a siphon where it has a little clip on there. Okay, so this is the pump I was talking about. Plus, I actually wanted to show you this pumping one too. So I got my bucket down on the floor, and all I got to do is just do that. And now it is siphoning beautifully. Um, so the siphon is in the bottom down here, um, which means, again, look how fast that's going. Uh, we're not going to get as much foam. Okay, so we're just going to take that siphon out. I'll just put it right down into my sanitizer bucket and probably go ahead and pump it. And I'm filling that tube, so keeping it constantly clean in case I need it. So, see, then you just end up with a little bit left that we can pour out. Otherwise, if you just kind of glug, glug, glug it, <laughs> you end up with a whole bunch of foam in here, which again isn't toxic, but it's a little bit annoying. All right, let's go ahead and get this. Uh, I'm going to drain this. Uh, turn it upside down a little bit, let it drain just a little bit, and then uh, we're going to fill it with our filtered water. Okay, I'm done draining just a couple of minutes there. Um, I went ahead and sanitized my hand in that solution, and since I had turned it upside down, I'm, my hand is sanitized. This is a spray bottle full of sanitizer, which is kind of handy to do. I feel like I want to just put my hand over that, but kind of spritz off that outer rim since I did kind of turn it upside down. It was on a clean towel, but I feel a little bit better about that. Okay, let's go ahead and get it filled with water. By the way, Craft Brew gives you, I didn't talk about that in my first clip of this video, they give you great instructions, so just very step by step. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we need to go ahead and fill, put our unfiltered, or unfiltered, our filtered water into this gallon um, carboy here, our fermenter. Okay, and notice that it actually has imprinted on it one gallon. Okay, right at the top of that writing is one gallon, and that's kind of right where the neck starts to curve there. Okay, so to start out with, we're only going to fill it up with a half a gallon, um, and then we're going to add some honey, and then we'll, we'll take it step by step. Um, I'm putting the, the funnel in there, which has been sanitized, which will just make it life a little bit easier uh, when we're filling it. Okay, so there's our about a half a gallon. It doesn't have to be exact. What we want to do now is to put about a third of the honey. So this is three pounds. I need two and a half pounds. Um, I, I may end up doing like the whole three pounds. It's not going to hurt anything, um, but we'll see. So now I'm going to try to get this going into the carboy here without touching the sides. There we go. And let's see if we can't get a third of that. Okay, we're almost there. Let's try like that and see where we're at here. Like I said, I may or may not use all of this. So I'm thinking that's about a third. One, two, three, with a little bit left over if I decide not to use the whole three pounds. So I make sure you don't touch anything because this isn't uh, sanitized. All right, so now we're going to put um, our rubber stopper, our bung back on there. And I'm going to sanitize my hand so I can put it over the hole. And we need to shake it up, swirl it until that honey is completely incorporated in there. Okay, so here we go. My hands are sanitized. This rubber stopper, this bung is sanitized. We're going to push that down in there. I'm going to hold over the top of that. And you just got to sit there and swirl and shake it until that is completely incorporated. Okay, so it takes a little bit because it's cold water with honey, so it takes a little bit to get that to, to dissolve in there, but we did it. We're just going to repeat the process until all of our honey is in there. Let's do a third at a time. I'm going to go ahead and take this bung off, put it back in the sanitizer um, while I add more honey. Um, the reason that you fill, like, fill it halfway full of your water first is obviously honey is very dense 
and so it displaces a lot of water so you know we started down here and look at the water level now here's our one gallon that we're going to need to fill it up to so we only have like that much further to go if i started here i wouldn't be able to get all of my honey in because it would have been coming out of the top so i'm going to go ahead and shake this up the rest of the way and then we will um, fill it up to that gallon mark Now we're going to need to add um, some nutrient to our yeast here and this just helps the yeast to stay healthy and to ferment a little bit better. And then we're going to shake it up a little bit more just to kind of incorporate that nutrient. There's definitely a whole lot of shaking going on. Now that we have definitely the full amount of water, we have the nutrients in there. Um, we have all the honey in there. Now I'm going to time it and actually shake this for a solid minute because the next step is going to be to pitch our yeast and yeast need oxygen, it needs to be oxygenated to do a good job. Okay, done shaking. Let's get our yeast uh, cut out of the open out of the packet and let's pitch it in here. I actually even sanitized my scissors and dried it with the paper towel. So let's go ahead. I don't know. I'm just paranoid about paranoid about sanitation. So let's go ahead and take this stopper off. And let's be as careful as we can to try to not let it stick to the side. Let's go ahead and pitch our yeast. This is what right now it's unfermented wine, honey wine, but this yeast um, is what's going to ferment it and give us that, the alcohol. Okay, some of it's sticking in the bottom, so I'm just trying to, that's okay. And I did get some on the sides, but that's all right. It is what it is. Okay, I'm going to fill up this airlock here with about halfway full of some filtered water okay and then that lid goes on top and this all came out of the sanitizer by the way let's put that on there okay there's our, our bung again and if you want to you can take a fresh paper towel which I have over here and kind of roll it a little bit and then maybe wipe off the bottom of that air airlock with it we're just gonna put the airlock down in here go ahead and push that bung it'll stick out okay and there we go we are all set we're going to put this away in a cool dark place it's going to take about 30 days but let's uh let's go sit down somewhere and let's talk a little bit about what's going to happen for the rest of the 30 days so that's really it again it's just yeast water and honey and there was a whole lot of shaking going on again the uh, yeast likes oxygen to be able to thrive okay so basically what i'm going to do is store this in a coat closet where it's dark and i'm actually storing a gallon of hefeweizen uh beer in there right now too so you want it to ferment anywhere between like 60 and 75 degrees my coat closet is a solid 68 degrees fahrenheit so it's going to have a buddy we're going to put i'm going to put this in there okay so um the meat needs to ferment for 30 days before we bottle it okay uh, but there are some things we're going to do in between okay so on day two so tomorrow uh, and day five we need to degas it okay and we're going to put more uh yeast nutrient in there so tomorrow so to degas it you take that stopper the airlock out keep the little stopper in there um, and then slowly kind of swirl it around and what we're doing is letting that build up of co2 come out we're going to do that for about a couple minutes we're going to slowly add some more of that yeast nutrient in there and swirl it so again for about two minutes okay um and then we'll put the airlock back on day five we're going to do the same thing the other half packet of that yeast nutrient we're going to degas it okay it keeps that yeast healthy so it can keep fermenting those um the honey and then what i'm going to do you can either wait till like 
day 20 out of 30 and you can degas it then i like to every few days though do that degassing where you take it off and swirl it for uh two minutes that's just kind of my style of doing it however um on day 20 of 30 you want to be done with that because you need for your um mead to sit for a full 10 days before you bottle it okay so um i'll check back in i'll show you how to do the degassing um and then i'll do some shorts you know videos along the way just to kind of show you what i'm doing it what it's looking like it's not going to look a lot different um but then definitely when we go to bottle uh, i'll do a video on bottling day anyway so anyways i hope you enjoyed that if you like uh home brewing as well uh, make sure you check out my other videos all right so i'm out for now uh thanks for watching please if you like what you uh what you saw here today please consider subscribing hit that thumbs up if you like it and that bell as well so that you get notifications when i come on all right i'm out for now